everybody and welcome back to my channel if you guys are new here hello and welcome to my channel I don't know why I'm so happy right now um, since this is going to kind of be like a really sad story um, but don't worry it does have a happy ending so um, this is my horror labor story uh, never in a million years did I think that this would happen to me but I guess it happened and we just gotta like live with it I have made other videos on um, my channel about this um, but I feel like at that point when I had made these videos I hadn't really fully digested what had happened to me um, and now I have so a little bit of a backstory my name is Maddie um, I am 22 right now but I did give birth um, about almost 10 months ago yeah I was 21 at the time um, and had gone into the hospital and this is what happened there was uh, a lot of things that happened so I'm gonna break it down into like two different points um, or two different like parts the first part is the labor part and then the second part is the recovery part so it all starts on September 6, 2019. I went into the hospital because I was experiencing um, contractions. I was like, cool. I was three days overdue. Anyways, when I got there, it was a particularly busy night at the hospital, which I mean, it's not the hospital's fault, but there weren't any rooms for me. Um, so I had to walk around for four hours before I could actually get admitted into a hospital room, which kind of sucks. Um, like I said, not the hospital's fault, but does kind of set the tone for the rest of the story. Um, also because there um, were no rooms, there was also um, very, there was one doctor on call for like oh, so many rooms. Um, so I had to wait three hours for my water to be broken. And also the doctor wasn't there to deliver my baby, which really sucks. Um, I do have to say all of the nurses were great um, in my delivery, um, it all except for one, I guess. Um, the recovery is where things really started to go downhill for the nurses. Anyways, so the doctor wasn't there to deliver my baby. Um, the nurse had to deliver my baby for me, which was okay, but I do think she was young and maybe I'm assuming it was um, one of her first deliveries just because she did mess up on delivering him. I feel like she did do the best of her ability though, so I will say that. Basically, when my son came out, he came up with his um, arm facing upwards, which is very dangerous. It could dislocate his arms. Um, so they uh, have to had to push him back in and make sure that his arm came out correctly. Also, he was faced upwards, so for those of you who don't know, a baby should be faced downwards, so um, facing towards the table, um, just because it provides more, for, like, it's like more easy access. Um, if a kid comes facing upwards, then it's like more friction. So he was having a hard time getting out and getting past like my pelvic, pelvis area. Um, so what the doctor was doing and a very kind of messed up, this is like where it gets messed up. Um, so she grabbed my son's head and was like twisting it, but like in a very aggressive way. She was like going like this with his head. Um, and we were all very scared. I couldn't see what was happening down there, but my fiance had gone into like complete shock. Um, and my mother who was there was screaming where the is the doctor. Um, just because it looked like they were dislocating my baby's head from my body. And, um, yeah, I just remember seeing like blood squirting everywhere. My mom's yelling, where the doctor? My fiance's in complete shock. At that point, a nurse had run into the room, um, like another random nurse, because my nurse was calling for help. Um, and this random nurse walked into the room and she saw what was happening and said, and I quote, oh sh and then ran out of the room and we never saw that nurse ever again. Um, which I just think is terrible in terms of bedside manner. Um, even if your patient is dying on the table, like you need to be strong for them and not scare them anymore. Um, so the fact that she ran out and like never came back is like a pretty big, um, you know, negative in my book. Anyways, by um, some sort of miracle, my son was delivered um, completely fine and healthy and the doctor had come in afterwards um, to 
fill out like all of his paperwork and he um, had some like medical students with him and so he was asking my nurse like what procedures she did and this all happened like right in front of me um, and so he's like okay what procedures did you do and she said oh I did the corkscrew removal and at that point the doctor turned to his students right in front of me and said corkscrew removal don't ever do the corkscrew removal um, and again just terrible bedside manner um, I didn't ask why not to do corkscrew removal um, I was kind of just like in so much shock at that point so I don't know that just kind of scared me and then I remember asking for my placenta um, like literally a minute after I had given birth and a little bit of a backstory when I was 21 weeks pregnant my first ever OB appointment I asked my OB for my placenta and she said you don't arrange for it now you arrange for it at the hospital once you've given birth so I said okay a minute after I had given birth all the nurses and doctors in the room said um, no that's not possible you need to rearrange um, for um, a factory to handle and get your placenta ready for you afterwards and it like takes like forty or fifty thousand dollars to get your placenta which is complete BS because my friend had given birth at the hospital not too long before I had and they didn't even ask her if she needed her placenta they literally just like put it in a bag and left it there for her if she wanted to take or not um, and I've never heard of anything costing forty or fifty dollars for a placenta uh, it's just extremely really weird um, and so yeah I didn't get my placenta and the reason I needed my placenta was not just for like you know beneficial things it was for uh, actually pretty serious things so someone in my family is disabled and the antibodies in my placenta could have helped um, you know at least not cured them hopefully cured them but at least helped them in a little bit so it was kind of just really sad that we couldn't get that placenta so that's kind of the terrible um, like story I guess of my labor um, where it really gets like pretty messed up is the recovery so um, they shipped me off to my recovery room and uh, it's like a known thing when someone has given birth you want to make sure that they have gone to the bathroom um, like pretty soon after uh, just because their bladder fills up quite um, quickly and if you don't uh, let them go to the washroom or you don't tell them that they need to go to the washroom or remind them their bladder can explode within their body and in some circumstances it can cause death and I didn't know that again I'm like a complete haze because I had just given birth he didn't let me know that I needed to pee or remind me that I needed to pee so actually my mother-in-law who is in the healthcare profession came to visit six hours after I had given birth and was like when was the last time you peed and I said I hadn't yet and she actually got very mad at the nurses and said like what the heck her bladder can explode and it can cause like all these terrible terrible things um, happening to you so um, they helped me pee at that point obviously um, and then I asked them probably like 10 hours after I had given birth for another pad um, I had brought my own but uh, just the pads that they were giving were, were just better they gave me one pad by the way um, the whole time that I was there and it was like right after I had given birth um, so I got my fiance to go ask for another pad and they said, and I quote, um, we're not going to give you another pad because she should have stopped bleeding by now, which is complete BS because you bleed for six weeks after you give birth and this was only 10 hours after I had given birth. So, um, I was obviously still bleeding really heavily, um, and they just wouldn't give me a pad, which was mind-boggling to me I don't know why I've seen other people tell their like labor stories and um, they literally give you like packages of pads to like leave the hospital with so I don't understand why um, and then also another thing which I had discovered just as I was getting dismissed from the hospital was I was supposed to take a Tylenol and an Advil every four hours 
um, for six weeks after my birth um, just to help with pain and the swelling down there since my birth was very traumatic. Um, the whole time I was in the hospital, I was like in excruciating pain, which I thought was normal after giving birth, but apparently it wasn't because um, the doctor had actually ordered me to take a Tylenol and an Advil every four hours and had written it down on my chart. And the only nurse that uh, noticed or seemed to care was the nurse that was um, dismissing me. So for the 24 hours that I was there, I did not take one Tylenol or Advil. And she like looked at my chart and obviously she didn't see that because every time like a nurse gives you a medication, she has to like write it down on um, your chart and like say like, this is how much I gave, this is the medicine that I gave, and this was the time that I gave it at. And obviously my chart was empty. And so she was like, when was the last time you took your medication? And I was like, medication. And she was like, she started getting mad at me. She's like, you need to take it. Why haven't you been taking it? This is like extremely critical for you. And I was like, I didn't even know that I was supposed to be taking these medications. Like, what? So that, again, is like patient neglect or something. So, um, yeah, that's basically it. Also, the hospital was just like super stingy with everything. They wouldn't even let us keep the blanket that my son was wrapped in, like his first ever blanket. They wouldn't allow us to take it. Um, the only thing they allowed us to take from the hospital was the card that said his name and how much he weighed, which obviously, what are they gonna do? They can't keep that. So they allowed us to have that. Um, they didn't allow us anything. So the first blanket um, is something that you cherish and you put in the memory box and we, I don't have it because um, they wouldn't let us take it. So that is basically it for this story. Um, like I said, it, there is a happy ending. I do have a beautiful son um, and he's just amazing and completely healthy and literally a miracle um, from this terrible birth experience. I also do wanna say that I know that there's more traumatic birth experiences out there and I was extremely lucky um, given you know the circumstance. And um, yeah, if you, are out there and you're watching this and you have experienced something similar and you feel comfortable leaving it in the comment section below um, I would love to just you know have an open chat about this I do also want to say for legal reasons I will not be saying the name of the hospital just again for legal reasons I don't know if they can sue me for any of this um, so I'm just not gonna say it <laughs> um, but it is like a very big hospital it's the biggest hospital in the city that I live in, which is like a pretty big city um, in Canada. So um, yeah, I will never be delivering at that hospital ever again. Um, it was absolutely terrible. The care that they gave me was horrendous and I will be delivering at a much smaller local hospital because um, I feel like maybe there they'll give me the care that I actually deserve and um, which every patient really deserves. So. If you have stuck to the end of this video, thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and also hit that like, I already said the like button, <laughs> hit the subscribe button down below um, and I'll see you in my next video, guys. Bye.